Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to generate 360 panoramic images with stable diffusion and automatic in 1111. But before we go there, there's some really good sites that I want to show you. Just a quick demonstration. Uh, one is from Blockade, Blockade Labs, where they have projected a 2D image into 3D space, and you can navigate around this this world and, and zoom in and zoom out. They also have an option where you can type in a prompt if you sign up and generate your own world with different styles. But it's really, really nice and, I, and the development's getting better and better. So I, go, I suggest you go and take a look at this site, which I'll leave a link in the description below. Another company decided to use the same idea at Blockade Labs or they're powering the Metaverse Explorer with Blockade Labs and this allows you to at least walk around this environment but it's the same thing there is I'm guessing a depth map driving this or some projection of a 2D image into 3D space because as you get further down you can see that the pixels and the depths are, are, are not there. But this is another exciting development which I think you should all go and at least try out and play around with, <laughs> have a little bit of fun. And so that is the Illumi AI Metaverse Explorer. All right, so before we go to the actual Automatic 11.11 and generate our own 360 panoramic images, let's have a look at have a look at one and see how we can actually um, use it. So here is a site where you can download some example references. So let's say we download this Christmas photo studio and we want to see what it looks like. Well, once you've downloaded it, you can head over to this online viewer and open it up and allows you to see it in 360 degrees and you can look up see the roof and come down to the floor and that's really really nice that's cool all right um but if we head back to the actual photo and we look at it i don't know about for the rest of you but to me initial uh, view of it is 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 these patterns right there's like a left there's a middle shape and then there's a right shape and why does it look like this and i'll give you a reference to the site where it represents that flat image and explains why it has those warp warpness to it see over here this this is the left part of the room this is the front and then this is the right and the other side gives you the back and of course top and bottom and top and bottom and so this is just a nice poly polygon to kind of show you how uh, a panoramic image looks like but that's great if you want to put this on a sphere but what is if you want to put it on a cube well there's an, another concept called a cube map and you need an image that looks like this in order to wrap it around a cube so there's another online tool I can provide you, which is this one, the Panorama to Cube Map. And if we chose that same file, you can see it breaks it up into a cube map. Now you can wrap it on a cube. So that's awesome, right? And now we understand how to work with panoramic images, but we want to generate our own. So in Stable Diffusion, you're going to need a few things. So first download Alora called Latent Labs 360 and put that into your Lora's folder. And then in Stable Diffusion or Automatic 1111, um, we need to use that to generate an image. Let's say the image we're looking for is a city park. And the width needs to be quite wide, so we set this to 1024, we can leave the height as 512, and we go ahead and generate. And that gives us this image. 
Uh, let, let's check the image and make sure that it's actually working for what we need. So we go to the online viewer and we can drag that image in. We can zoom out a little bit. And as you navigate around, you get this line down the middle of the page. And that's just because over here, this left and right are not matching up uh, when the, this Laura generated the 360 panoramic image. So how do we fix that? Well, what you can do is use a form of tiling. So if you go to your extensions, click the available tab, load from URL, uncheck the installed, search for tile, or tiling, and you need to install this asymmetric tiling extension. Once you have that installed, apply and restart, and then head over to your text to image, and you should see this expandable section, asymmetric tiling. So let's do the same thing, but let's activate the tiling on the x-axis and see what happens. Right, we have our new image. Let's verify it by dragging our image over here. And as you navigate around, you should see no line down the middle of your image. And we've successfully got a really good 360 panoramic image. All right, and that's how you do it with stable diffusion in Automatic 11.11. But let's take it one step further. How would I do this in DaVinci Resolve and um, have what I think is called reflection mapping? But don't hold me to that. So if you go to DaVinci Resolve and you click on your media pool over here, bring your image into the media pool. So that's our image. And if you right click, add a new timeline. Okay. All you want to use is Fusion uh, for this projection, right? And to get a Fusion clip over here, you got to click Effects, and you got to search for Fusion. In your Effects, you should get this Fusion composition. Drag that into your timeline, and then you can right click and say open in the Fusion page. So over here, we have our media in, but we need our, our image. So we drag our image here. Now we can take away the media pool. Obviously, if we just drag these two together, we can see our 360 panoramic image. But we want to do this in 3D space and actually reflected off an object. So let's get some 3D nodes here. So we want a 3D shape. So we drag that to the 3D shape. And then it's always good to have a merge node and then our renderer. So we can take 3D space back to 2D space. So let's join all this up. Okay. So there is our image. If I push but click media one or media out one and I push two on my keyboard. That should put that to the right hand side of my viewer. If I click the merge and I push one on my keyboard, it gives me this 3D viewer. If I use Alt and the middle mouse button, I can zoom around, or if I use Control and scroll the mouse wheel and zoom out. Okay. And of course, I want to do a kind of reflection. So if I click this shape 3D and I change from plane to sphere, and I can expand the sphere a little bit. And just zoom out. Okay. So there we have it. We have what I'm calling reflection mapping. It's, this is an image reflected onto a sphere, and you can use the sphere to rotate around if you want. You can rotate your sphere around. And I think what's best, however, is to actually use a camera rather than just rotating the sphere. So if we add a camera in here, 
bring it into the mode node and the camera's focal length is a bit wide so let's actually bring that down and now with the camera you can actually rotate the camera around in the same way as you were rotating the sphere around and get the same thing all right so that's how you do 360 panoramic images with stable diffusion and automatic 1111 and that's all for today and i hope you enjoyed it if you want to learn more about stable diffusion and automatic 1111 check out the links below in the description as always please support this channel by subscribing and clicking the like button below